Never ran down the stairs so fast in my life. It's quite nice. Stick to electrics. But I'm definitely up there with the best of them. Now you've got something that looks like a mess. And he's probably watching this video right now. Yo, welcome back to the channel. So, intro, yeah. Adding data points around uh, one of our subscribers' houses. He wanted Cat6 points throughout his house. It's a brand new build property. Um, he wanted Wi-Fi points on each floor. It's three floors high. And uh, cameras wired in Cat6, ready for future to avoid any damage there. Um, one, one big issue that we had on this job though, I, for the first time in my whole life, drilled straight through a water pipe under the floor. Anyway, it's gonna head straight over to the job. So I'll see you over there. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Oosh. Here we are now, brand new house. Literally not long, got the key, so there's no carpets anywhere. Um, we're gonna be running, I think we've got about 15 data points to run throughout the house. Uh, slightly more difficult because there's no loft. It's a three-storey house or two-storey house, whatever, whatever you want to call it. So there's no access to the loft, so it's all under the floors. And obviously it's new builds, so it's all chipboard floors. So we're going to be using them super rod, super rod doodars, which are pretty cool. And this is the office room where the cabs go in anyway. We've got four data points to go there. Guessing a big desk going there, judging by the amount of sockets. Data cab's going to say on the floor over in that corner. So all cables are going to come up from the floor. So I've got one of these desk management thingy, thingy my jigs that you can bring your cables through just to just to bring the transition through the floor a bit neater. Um, this I'm on the middle middle level at the minute. Um, the, the main BT master point is downstairs under there, so I'm going to cut them out. Hopefully we'll be able to get up there. We're going to bring three cables up to there, which should go straight through to the cab. I'm assuming the joists run that way, judging by the boards being laid that way. So the, the joists are going to, in fact, they definitely run that way. Um, uh, then we've got, obviously, the next floor. We've got one data point to go up there and no two because we've got a Wi-Fi point going up to that bit. And then we're going to have this main run, this main centre run all the way down should get us straight over to the cab. We'll have to go through every joist to get through here unless they're those uh, joists with the metal, metal zigzags, which I'm hoping for, but I highly doubt it. We've got two data points going there. We've got two cameras, CCTV points, one going out that way, one going out that way. That'll cover the side and the back. Um, so what I'm going to do is cut these, cut these, this run out, get my cable route. We've got a camera going out there as well for the front. Uh, I'm going to cut all my boxes out throughout the whole house now. Get my cable routes planned, get all my access holes cut. Um, before I start wiring everything. That way it gives me something to wire to. I like to have my boxes cut out ready. Start cutting holes out and then uh, catch up when we probably start wiring.
as you can see, that's the cupboard that we want to be getting in for the uh, BT BT master is down there. Also the mains board is, as you can tell by the beautifully lashed cables. There, to be fair, they are clipped. The joists are those type, I don't know if you can just see one there. That type of joist with the, so yeah, I didn't get lucky this time. GoPro doesn't quite fit, but our data cab is going that way. And there's another little noggin joist type thing there, about there. This is a Unilite little uh, one of them, in case anyone's gonna ask. Yeah, we've got like a little joist there. So it's finally happened. So obviously I've been cutting these little holes out with the super adapter. As you see, and that was the first one I've done and I got that video. I've been taking the drill bit out once I've got a little groove because I don't want the drill bit going much further down in case I touch any cables or pipes. More in particular pipes like I've just done there. Right on, right on that fitting. Right in the corner of that fitting, if you can see that. Water's been spewing up at me like a fountain. I've never ran down the stairs so fast in my life, I nearly fell over. Uh, just uh, So, the, the actual position of the hole ain't too bad because it is just on that fitting, so the fitting can just be swapped. It's not right in the centre of a pipe where I've got to mess about cutting pipes. It's just going to be taking that off swap it I'm more concerned about the ceiling I don't really want it soaking through and staying in but I did dry it off pretty fast I had my hand under there with loads of blue rolls straight away just had to do the electrician's walk of shame though in screw fix buying plumbing gear Ugh, plumbers yeah with that t-shirt on they probably thought what are you doing anyway get that fixed get the water back on Talk about knocking my confidence out of me now. I've got to drill loads more of them. So yeah, that's not very fun. Right, there's the uh, old one. As you can see on the pipes, I've not actually touched any of the pipes. Where's that other one curled up to? There it is. I've not actually touched the pipes, it's just touched the fitting. So all I've got to do is put the new one on. And it's just push fit, so. I'm quite lucky really. I mean, it'd have been luckier if I didn't hit it at all, wouldn't it? But at least it's a very simple fix. So with these hepto all fittings, you actually know when the, the pipe's been pushed all the way in because it's got um, like little grooves so when you spin the pipe you can you can feel it. That's their new little method. I'm like a gynaecologist in here. <sighs> right, I'm going to turn it back on, check. Righty, righty. That's swapped. I've turned the water back on now. That's why it's a bit bright, that. Uh, I've dried all the pipe work and stuff, just making sure there's no little drips and drops coming from anywhere. That was actually boiling hot, that water, when it came spitting at me. <sighs> Not a good start to the job, is it? This is for one of my uh, lovely subscribers as well, and here I am ruining it brand new house. So, we may slightly be getting lucky here. So from there to there, obviously the joists are all running that way, but there is, if you can see it, the data cables, their data power's there next to it. Oh, sorry. Power's there. And the hole is like 32 mil and there's only three, three, uh, actually it looks like Cat 6, that. Cat 6 is running through them holes through the joist. And they run obviously all the way through. And I've come to this one and they're still there. Data cables. Let's see if you can see this hole. So there you go. It's a nice 32 mil hole. Which means, if I'm feeling lucky, We'll be able to rod from there to there without having to cut holes through every section. And then obviously it carries on to probably about mid room. So if I drill another one somewhere there, see how good I am. Of course we can do it with cable smiths. 
I'm not saying I'm the best or anything, but I'm definitely up there with the best of them. So there's my rod, right to the very end one. Didn't even need that all. And there's the other end, look. Straight through, through every existing hole for the data cables all the way to that point. The reason I've gone to that point and not any further is because I'm going to be turning two of the cables that way to get to that point there. But there you go. Oh my God. They don't call me the cable smith for nothing. So what I've done is uh, I've only got three boxes of cable. Uh, so I've just, I need five cables over there. One of them's for a Wi-Fi point here, but I'm going to pull it in now because I'm not doing that rod in again. So I've just cut off two to the right length and then I've taped the other three on, marked them all up. I'm just going to pull them out that side right about now. The funk soul brother. As you can probably see, it was that cable there. So I'm just gonna uh, pull them straight. Pull a bit out of the box. Because that box is a bit tight. So I'm pull a couple of meters out of the boxes. Be much at this, can you? But I'm gonna pull off a couple more meters. Obviously I've got all the cables there. The cab's just going over there. So that's five. Whew. Wired. Hopefully that saved me a bit of time after spending uh, about an hour and a half, two hours doing that, going, going screw fix and all that. Anyway, rattling on. Gonna cut these off to length now. Try and get them over to the cab. Ryan's not in. He's got a doctor's appointment, so I'm already behind schedule. That's the first five in. Ten more to go. They're gone, and they're there. So now what I'm gonna do is redo them, because there's five there. So I've got two to go there, one to go to a wireless point underneath in the kitchen and one for each camera over there. So it's taking too long, so I'm not showing you any more wiring. That was the coolest little trick ever. I got all the way through the joists. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna get it all first fixed and then catch up with you because it's just taking too long and I can't keep filming the job. I need to actually do some work, believe it or not. Just wrapping up for the day now. Uh, managed to get the camera points to there and I've done this full run with only five five cuts and just managed to rod rod through every joist which was uh, quite lucky but that pipe slowed me down and I'm absolutely starving not had any food today and all I've had to drink is that bit of water so because I've been trying to catch up got them in there Patch that back up, just needs a bit of easy fill over that. Um, that. That one's for the wireless point, and that's going to be somewhere about there downstairs. So my plan is to cut the hole out downstairs. Uh, hopefully see all five cables that run that way, and just pull that one so it pulls back. Save me cutting another hole on the top. I'm trying to keep them to a minimum. I mean, you never know that. They did. You'd never know that they was there anyway, but... Believe it or not, them ones to get from there to there were the hardest ones, believe it or not. Hence why there's uh, extra holes everywhere. In fact, one, two, three, four, there's four in here just to get to there. There's only five to get from one side of the house to the other. Um, the camera was originally going to go out the wall there, but there's that many pipes and the joist so close to the, the wall, I'm a bit... Skeptical drilling. I'm going to drill them outwards in, but I'm a bit worried of doing it there, so I might try and just move it over here a bit. And should be able to get the cable from from one or the other. So I think we've got uh, nine of them in now. I just need to get fish them ones behind that skirting them up to the box there. That's this four in that. And then all we've got to get then is three cables from downstairs there across and one, no two, upstairs. Um, one for a Wi-Fi point there, and one for a, a, a wall mounted access point up in the bedroom. Anyway, right, I'm going home. It's dark, cable smith out. Oh, that was well a cringy, wasn't it? 
data points there. I've already explained this four times. It's just that the camera keeps going off, but for some reason. So yeah, we've had to obviously cut that to drill down to bring the cable up through that hole and up to the back box, which is there. I've never really shown any patching in on a plasterboard wall, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, show, you how, show you how I do that. Any plasterers who are probably watching this are probably going to cringe at me and sell me off, but this is the way I do it. Um, I usually say that I don't do any uh, repair work, but when it's something so small, I'll just do it. Happy customers, hopefully. Um, yeah, that's the piece I cut out, so we'll crack on. Put you on the tripod. Well, the first thing that I do is get a torch on so you can see what I'm doing. Hopefully that looks all right. Get a scrap of wood, any, any scrap of wood will do. Stick it up to the wall like that to make sure there's nothing there, nothing there. It's going to be about that big. Enough that you can get it in the hole. And I'm going to just cut that. Right, that's that, that's that cut to a block of wood. So it can overlap that hole like that, both sides. Maybe if the drill gets right in the light in it. Plasterboard screws, the black ones, they sink in nicely. Stick that in the hole. Like that. Get a screw either side to hold it in place. Sink the screw in a bit. And then, you've got your piece that you cut out of there. I think it goes that way. But see how oh, there's, there's not really an edge on that, let me show you. You can't squeeze any plaster or anything in there. It's too sharp of an edge. So, knife. And just, you don't have to, again, don't have to be neat. Just take that sharp edge off all the way around. Take a nice chunk out of there. And do the same on your piece like that, like peeling a spud. So now it just looks like that, looks a bit silly, but it isn't silly. Make sure you get it the right way. Which is like that. Couple of screws to hold that in. Sink them below the surface. Now you've got something that looks like a mess. And then mix up a bit of easy fill and you'll be able to skim over that lovely, sand it down, you'll never see it. I'll, I'll show you the easy fill when I come to doing it because I've got a couple of them to do. So I'm not mixing any up yet, but when I do, I'll show you on this one because this is the one we're all working on together like a great little happy family. Now, obviously, I'm not a plasterer and I'm not a decorator and I don't really do patching in, but there's not that much to do in this house, so I'm just going to do it to save the customer a little bit of drama because that's what we do out here. Anyway, I'm just going to show you what I do. Easy fill. It costs about seven quid for a bag of that. Little scraper, that's just to mix it up. Tiniest bit of water in the bucket there. That's probably still too much, but I'm just going to make that much anyway. I'd rather have too much than have to keep mixing it again. Um, I've had to buy another bucket actually, because uh, I had a very similar bucket, but one of my customers stole it off me. And he's probably watching this video right now. You want to make sure your bucket's nice and clean. I know it doesn't look it, but it is. It's just an illusion. And then uh, just slowly start adding some of that and stirring it, like making a cake. And yes, I do have the world's worst plastering tools. They're the cheapest brand you can possibly get. Won't mind myself some uh, some of those Marshall Town ones, but quite expensive, you see. And also, I'm not a plasterer, so yeah, just want to add this a little bit at a time, like so. Obviously, I know I need a good chunk of it to begin with. Let's go with that for now. Get me a little uh, bucket, trowel, whatever that's called. Just give it a mix, nice and easy, until it gets uh, a good creamy consistency on it. Don't want any lumps in there either. Just slowly add bits at a time. 
and all this plaster is watching this right now just going what's he doing what is he doing that's not what you're supposed to do stick to electrics still too runny yet but it's not far off Probably about right that So as you can see It's nice and runny still but Not quite falling off when I turn it upside down We do that It don't quite fall off the trowel But it's runny enough So that's kind of what I want Myself anyway Nice and creamy that Looks quite nice to eat it to be honest Looks good doesn't it It's quite nice I'll take you to the one that I've shown patching in and uh, we'll go, go from there. Right, this is the one. So, easy fill. They don't call it easy fill for no reason. Just start off. So then beveled edges that we cut on the edge, you just want to, don't have to be dead neat yet. Just keep pushing it in, force it right into the very back. Go over the top of that completely like that. In fact, most of the time you can't even tell it was ever there once it's been sanded and painted. So usually the wider, I know the cut was only small in the middle, but the wider you go out, the the better you get the finish. Really big, cheap and nasty one. Camera here, but I'm just going to run that up like that just to try and feather it out the edges a bit. I mean, you could, by all means, just scrape it like that dead tight, be dead flush with the wall. But that's just not, a, not how you get a good finish. You want to leave it quite raised. I'll just tidy this up now because I've just ruined it. I? Just leave it raised, let it dry, sand it down with a sanding block so you flush with the existing wall sort of thing, if that makes sense. And then paint it again. And you'd never know... Tidy those little edges up a little bit. As you can see you now it's coming along, it's coming along. Say so I just try and leave it quite proud of the surface. Gradually feathered out to the edges and then let's say I'm not trying to get it completely flat, by the way. I want it to be raised. Because it will, it does slightly shrink as it dries, I think, this stuff anyway. And then you want something to be able to sand back flush. If you, you want, but I want to be above that surface because you want to be able to sand it and it'll take it back to that. So I'm quite happy with that, to be honest. I think I'll uh, leave that at that. So you can't really tell in the camera, but it is proud of the surface. But once that's uh, sanded back and painted, you will never, ever know that the cable smith's been plastered in. Ryan's decided to show his face today, look. It's that jumpy you've got him, Ryan. So, right, do you want to uh, come to this cable? So the, the Wi-Fi point downstairs is somewhere around there. That's the cable for it. I think I already explained why, because I, I pulled it right through past that hole. And Ryan's going to now tell me which cable that is and downstairs where the access point's going just drilled my hole and I've uh, put the fixings in for the access point already because there's no flies on me if we look in there there's the cable so now I just need to find the right one pull it back and uh, it saved me having another hole upstairs just to get that cable there so hand in Give it a wiggle, Ryan. That one? Yeah. That one? No. Is it that one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Bit long, obviously, because I pulled it past, but... There we go. Access point done, in line with the downlight. 
And uh, then we've got these three down here. Managed to use the, the gecko to get up there, but because the alarm cables was crossing over, I had to just pad some of that bit out just to jump up. And then obviously the gecko took us up to the ceiling. That was the only route I could take because all this is in the way to get our three down there. Nice 35 mil deep box ready for the cables. This is the existing stuff. That was already broke. Look at the length on them. That is dreadful terminations. It was him. Probably. Just thought I'd show you the difference on these. So there's the existing ones. And there's mine. Oh, I'm not even like showing off. That's just how you're supposed to do them. That's not how you're supposed to do them. Ridiculous. Should be ashamed of yourself. So, I'm gonna show you how to connect up an RJ45 outlet like this. This is XL, face plates XL, even though they're a different color. No idea why, can someone comment about that? Cause it really gets on my nerves. Um, on the back, a little something like that. I don't know how well you can see it, but you usually have two different ways. You have an A pattern and B pattern. We use the B pattern. Snip your cable down to length like that. Strip them, I like to strip them a bit longer than just a tight, light touch with data cable. Cut that little stripping thing out. Separate your colours either side like that. Cut that middle bit out. See, there's a bit there for cable tying. You want to connect it up from that side. You don't want to leave them dead straddly like them ones we've just seen downstairs, where they're not, you want to keep them twisted as long as you can. So if you want to put it about there, while this is upside down still, um, and we go for the B pattern, which is orange at the top there. So what I do, it's hard to show because it's so small. Stop it like that with my thumb on that side, bring the cables over, then I can untwist them from that way. That way it won't untwist them there. I hope that made sense. So what I'll do, hold it down like that, hold it tight with my thumb on the right now, untwist it slightly, enough just to separate them. See, they're still twisted all the way. And then same with the blue and white and trying to keep them twisted as much as possible. That's the main thing. Not get any interference, any of that cross talk or whatever the hell that is. So you want to have something that looks like that. Then you want to get your chrome tool. I call it a chrome tool, punch down tool, whatever it's called. They've got little scissors on the end, but I've only just found out today that these ones are now not working. So usually I like to hold it against something quite tight, like a flat wall if I can. Sometimes you can't, just do it in your hand. But then you just want to punch all of eight of them down. So they're nice and tight and what that does, just, just cuts into the cable slightly. So the copper is touching the pins sort of thing. So they're all punched down nice. I can see that they're all right down to the bottom. You can see that the wedge between those metal pins. Obviously, normally them scissors there would cut them off. But in my case, I'll have to use my knife because I just found out, like I said, that today I'll just knife them off like that. But they're not working. And then, now I know what you're going to say, it's not a cable tied to that. So then what you do, spin it upside down and you've got a lovely end like that and people will come in the future and go, how the goddamn hell has he got it so tight to the end? Just get your little cable tie that comes with the uh, outlets. Get it through there like that. Bit of strain relief or whatever you want to call that. Dip it down. Nice and tight. I've got my snips in my pocket, but I'll just knife it off. And that's how you do them. Then that will nicely go, because this is long. Back like so. Just push into the Euro module. Like I said, can you see the difference in colour? This is all XL gear, so what is that? Is it something to do with that antibacterial type face plates or what? Because it does bug me. It's another little quick tip on there whilst I'm showing stuff off. Um, I've patched that up. Just needs a bit of easy fill. Anyway, that's not what I'm showing you. Um, when you've got four in a row like this, or even two in a row, um, you don't want them all coming in the same hole or anything like that because they're, they're tight. Even though it's a 35 mil box, you don't get much space once your outlets go in. And these are the low profile ones. So 
in this case these are number three four five and six so we'll put them through each individual hole three four five and six that way when you snap them back in place like that they're just behind the self and here the next one it's got its, its own little space to go into once you start crossing them over you've got absolutely no chance of getting them in top tip number 22 million hey did you catch my new jumper personalized excuse me i'm eating some tic tacs right Keystone jacks don't fit into that panel. Uh, customer supplied both of these. So it's not my mess up. But instead he's just asked us to put them on the ends and he'll order a new panel. I, I've never used Keystone jacks myself before so I don't know why. It must just be the branding. You'd assume that they, they'd all be the same but obviously they're not. They're not just in random lengths either. They start at number one, two, three, four and they gradually get longer. Is so they can all swoop in from one side. Obviously, number one of the shortest, 15 or whatever, is the longest. So that's that done. We've checked them all. On this job, Ryan's connected up one end, and the whole thing is wrong. So he's just redoing that now, and we'll check that one. All labelled up, as you can see, with the numbers. I just need to go around now and patch up the, the odd cut, which I'm going to show you in a sec. Yes, they are both XL. No idea why the different colours really gets on the nerves of that, but if anyone knows why, let us know. Are you done yet, Ryan? That sticker's still there. It's Ryan thinking he's funny. Just thought I'd show you a few of the other cuts. So that one's pretty much the same thing. Patched in. Uh, this one on the hallway for our route upstairs, we had to make three cuts, one there at the bottom, one in the middle there. Again, that's raised so it can be sanded back and one at the top and that got us upstairs. Um, and then that one was against the block work wall, so I put bonding plaster in that first. So there was only about three mil on the surface and then I've easy filled over the top of that. Welcome to uh, plastering with the electricians and i'll be your host right now that's everything we're all done on this job um lovely job really enjoyed it so thank you to the customer if you enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe and all that nonsense see you later